Hey good people, it is Tashara from Politics and Fashion here today with a video that is about a topic that has been trending. I've seen this conversation everywhere from TikTok to Instagram and to YouTube. It is this concept of quiet luxury. And today I wanna to talk a bit about what quiet luxury is and how it is commonly defined, the problems that I have with it. <coughs> White supremacy. <coughs> Girl, some got caught in my... White supremacy got caught in my... Uh, the problems that I have with it, uh, and also uh, some uh, quiet luxury brands, the ones that I think, okay, I can bang with you, I see the vision, and the ones that, girl, we just hated it, we're not, we're not going to be able to do. So, again, a bit of history, my personal opinion, also a brand review in today's video. Now, I'm going to be coming out guns blazing with my 100% opinion. This channel is called Politics and Fashion for a reason. And if you are the kind of person that tends to shy away from debate or intellectual discourse, which you disagree, then this is not the video for you, my friend. Uh, please go back and take a look at my blogs or my fashion videos. You're gonna love those. But if you are the kind of person who does want to think critically about the world, get locked and loaded with me, friend. Follow me all across the internet, including on social media. Tune in to my podcast, Justice, where this topic will come up in season three. And let's get started. I have had this quiet luxury video in mind, y'all, for probably about a month or so. I just put it on my editorial calendar and decided that I wanted to sit on it. But what really spurred me to action was a conversation with my friend Tanika B. Hey girl, hey, if you are watching. And Tanika said something in a video, it was just kind of like a side comment, it wasn't the focus of her video, about how she saw uh, these conversations on TikTok, especially around quiet luxury being problematic and that the capsule wardrobe girls were not too far behind. And I texted her and I said, Tanika, what have I done to you today? I'm a capsule wardrobe girl. How did we get drug into this discussion? We've done nothing. <laughs> We're just sitting <laughs> over here minding our business with our 15 garments, okay? Maximizing our wardrobes and interchangeability. We're shopping with intention and we're consuming consciously. We ain't bothered nobody. Why? How we got drug into the fight? Tanika and I laughed about it. And she sent me some TikToks of probably the most disturbing discourse I've seen in a long time, uh, especially from young women of color and young black women especially. And for them, they were talking about how they would privilege this idea of quiet luxury over loud luxury or pieces that may be a bit more logo forward. For them, it's better to have an old money aesthetic versus a new money aesthetic. This is a work of art. This is bullshit. This is a work of art. This is bullshit. This is a work of art. But this, this is bullshit. Now this is not a new idea or concept whatsoever, y'all. Um, anywhere that US or Western imperialism and colonization has touched probably has this idea of better ways to be wealthy than others, which is insane to me that there are better ways to be rich. Um, but I think the idea really what it amounts to is there are better ways to assimilate into whiteness or to be white than not. There are better ways to be demonstrative of white elite and your proximity to whiteness and therefore wealth than not. And that is where this whole conversation for me goes awry because it is not necessarily about design. It's not necessarily about quality of fabrics. It's not about treatment whenever you go into a boutique, for example. It's not about aesthetics. It's not about what fashion really is about. It is about how well you are able to adopt white dominant norms, and that is highly problematic. My primary contention with this idea of old money and uh, quiet luxury is that those terms are just veiled ways to uplift and to shepherd and to propagate white supremacy. And this idea that we should all want to be like white elites. And uh, that cannot be farther 
from the truth for me personally, but I also think that this idea of quiet luxury is a misnomer. Now, these old money folks may be a bit amenable or understated in how they dress, but they definitely are not in how they spend their money. In fact, I think they do it quite loudly. I don't know nobody who would say having a private jet is quiet. Having multiple nannies is quiet. Having summer and vacation homes is quiet. Having private fitness instructors, uh, having children in boarding schools, you see where I'm going? These things are not quiet. It is just this idea that because they are wealthy, they get to determine how everyone else should be living their lives. And if you're not living your life in a way that means you are striving towards being more like them or assimilating into their lifestyle, you are doing something wrong. Again, it is white supremacy under another name. Outside of it, also condemning how mostly, <laughs> let's be honest, Black and brown people spend their money and choose to show up culturally and display their wealth. Uh, it also fails to recognize where many of these white people who have said uh, generational wealth and are able to invest in quiet luxury got their money. Now, if you want to have that conversation, let's have it. Because when we say old oh, money, we're not talking about the African empires. We're talking about... Western mostly, so European and American families, who at some point, a lot of them, have had problematic origins of their wealth. So from that perspective, you can't tell me nothing about how to spend my money, not when you got yours off the backs of black and brown people. Chattel slavery, you wanna have that discussion? genocide of native peoples. We'll talk about that in this quiet luxury conversation. The Chinese immigrants who did back-breaking labor to build the Transatlantic Railroad. You want to have that conversation? You don't want to talk about that? Okay. I was just wondering. So because I, I, I think that unless you come into me as a white person of generational wealth whose wealth can be tied back to problematic origins, once again, unless you're coming to me having a conversation about reparations, what I'm not interested in is having a conversation about me being Gucci down to the socks, because you can't tell me anything about money, wealth, or how I spend mine. And what I really think is that a lot of people who are having these conversations about quiet luxury, who are pro-quiet luxury, who are people of color, really need to um, log off the internet and log into therapy. Now, I'm not trying to be flippant. I'm, I'm being concrete and very serious because internalized racism is real. Internalized misogyny, sexism, it is real. And uh, addressing those issues would likely be a lot more profitable and definitely better for the world than you telling black and brown people, especially black women, how to dress and how to spend their money. Do your work, friend. Rant is over and let's actually jump into some of these quiet luxury brands, y'all, uh, because I don't hate them all and I don't love them all. And I do think that it's worth mentioning because the one good thing coming from this is that we are expanding the notion of or our understanding of what quiet luxury or luxury brands that exist in general. I think for people who don't necessarily play a lot in this space, they may only know of the big five or so and not so much about the brands that I'm about to mention today. So I hope today will be a bit of education for some and inspiration for others to dig deeper into these brands, especially the ones that I would recommend. And let's jump out here with a Loro Piana. Laura Piana. Uh, Y'all be doing that brand wrong. And let me tell you why. The only thing I knew about Laura Piana was these. And I said, my God, today why? Unless you need an orthotic, maybe you're hammer-toed, pigeon-toed, and you're head to the golf course. I don't know why 
you would want to put these on your feet. If my elementary school librarian was a shoe, she would be this loafer. And so I thought that I hated the brand because y'all keep jumping out here with these damn shoes. But that's not true, y'all. That's not true. Who knew? I went down to City Center last week to do a little bit of recon. There is a Laura Piana down there. And I, first and foremost, y'all, when I walk into a boutique, I'm looking at the experience. Because for me, the shopping experience should also be luxurious, not just the item. And Laura Piana completely met every single expectation I had and rose above. And I'm someone who worked in luxury retail, you all. So I go into the boutique. It is probably about one o'clock on a Wednesday. So very low traffic at city center. And as soon as I got in, I was greeted by the sales associate who was very nice. She didn't feel like pushy, like breathing down my neck. It was just a, hey, how are you? Welcome in. As I was browsing, she came up to me and she was like, have you ever been in before? And I said, no, I don't know much about your brand. She then started to educate me about the brand. And I said, girl, you better. Absolutely. I, I, I came in here. I'm literally walking into your house. Let me know something about why this place is special. She tells me about the brand, gives me some background. Uh, and then she quickly says, can I offer you some water while you browse? Yes. She says, do you want sparkling or do you want steel? Now you got me. Now you got me because y'all got alternatives in the water. And I'm a sparkling kind of girl. Bring me, run me that sparkle in my G. She brings the Perrier out. You know, I'm just sipping, doing my thing. And I end up trying on this suit, y'all. Now, I walked in funnily. Funny. Is funnily a word? I walked in, ironically, um, with an H&M linen suit on. And so I tried on, intentionally, a suit at Loro because I wanted to be able to compare these things, right? You got this high street piece that's actually, I think, pretty well made for a fast fashion brand like H&M. And then you have this luxury item. Put on the suit and it was a moment in love at first sight, y'all. I'm talking about, I would do some strange for some change for this one. I was shook in tears almost, I said, ma'am, come tell me about this suit because y'all have had some magical leprechauns to sew this thing. And this is what she told me. She said it is a 100% linen suit that is lined, but what we have done is woven aloe into it so that it's soft on the skin. This is luxury, my G. This is what we came here for. The customer service is A1. The materials are not like anything I've ever put on my body before. And I am 41 years of age. I'm at a big age. You say you put aloe in the linen? Let's talk about price here, okay? Uh, the jacket was uh, around 3,500, I think and the matching pants were around 1500 or so. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'll make sure I put the prices on the screen. The entire suit for me was a bust down look because I am the kind of person who loves to kind of be on that line of androgyny. But I have to also say that there wasn't too much more in the boutique that I personally would have gravitated towards. I do think that the pieces cater to a much more mature audience, hence the loafers that I just talked about, okay? By the way, I'm completely joking. If y'all love them loafers, go off, sis. Uh, they did have a few pair of like mules that I could have definitely seen myself in, but they didn't have my size. All in all, it was a great shopping experience. I was really impressed. When I think about this brand, what comes to mind is probably what they're known the most for out of all of the brands on my list to talk to y'all about today. And that is Noble Fabrics. Let me know if you've ever heard of this concept of Noble Fabrics. I had not. And they are these fabrics that are very expensive and very exclusive because of the ways in which they are produced. At the top of the list is something called Vicunia the type of wool. Then we have baby cashmere and then we have cashmere. Now I thought cashmere was the it 
the it to the it to the it. No, there's levels to this, friends. Um, and vicuña is incredibly rare. It is an animal that lives in the Andes. Um, it, number one, it's rare because the area where these animals are, the temperatures are extremely cold, okay? Um, and the uh, hair or the fur on the animal grows very, very slowly. So one vicuña isn't producing a whole lot of wool. And so as a result, when you are able to, um, you know, harvest it or whatever the process is called, it's a small amount. Therefore, uh, obviously the price and the demand is higher because you have a smaller quantity of it. Now, <clears throat> they actually had a book in Laurel where they go through the entire production process where is this whole ceremony by indigenous people when they actually shave the vicuña. It was beautiful, honestly, um, in the way at least that it was described to me. I don't know what it's like in real life. But what I can say is that Laurel is one of the only brands that is involved with every aspect of their brand from uh, the production, so the actual vicuña, <laughs> all the way to uh, the actual garment being made. Uh, it is an Italian company. It is under the LVMH brand, Louis Vuitton Moet and Hennessy, of course. And they have just stayed true to these highly uh, impressive and again, noble fabrics since their founding and I was just blown away by that. When I think of luxury, this kind of stuff is what it includes. Last thing I'll say is that I was able to try on a Vicuña scarf and it feels exactly like you would imagine. I wish I could tell you all it felt like a Target sweater, it felt like cashmere, it felt like regular wool and I, if I wish I could tell you that, but I cannot. I would be lying to you, friend. That thing felt like a cloud. Like Jesus up on high came down and, and had one of his angels to wrap me in a cloud. I had never felt anything like it. And again, I just told you, I worked in a luxury retail environment. I have loved fashion my entire life. I have any matter of textiles and garments and all of that stuff in my closet right now. But that was on a different level. I said, ma'am, how much is this scarf? She said $5,000. I said, take this off of me. <laughs> so in all sincerity, we're going to say yes to Laurel Piana. I feel like the brand lives up to the hype, even with their minimal designs. It is a yes for me. Now, on the same day, I made my way over to Bruno Cuccinelli. Uh, they actually are also down at City Center in Washington, D.C. And uh, I have to say that the customer service was not as great. Laurel definitely set the bar high. Walked in Bruno, was not greeted as quickly, was not offered a beverage as quickly. And when I was, I was offered water, likely because of the time of day it was. But the thing about Bruno that you got to know is that they have a full bar. And it's on display. Every type of whiskey, scotch, vodka, gin that you can imagine is on display in the boutique as well as an array of bar snacks to go along with it, <laughs> okay? So I was like, well, I guess I'm giving basic. A complimentary bottle of water for me. I can't you know, offer me no champagne. But again, may have been the, kind, the time of day it was. Maybe they only offer you a cocktail after five. I don't, I don't know, okay? Uh, but uh, I have to say that even the way that the sales associate was interacting with me did not feel as genuine or as if she was as interested. And I also have to say that unlike Loro, Bruno really tries to develop it, their own aesthetic and to be fashion forward. However, they fail. Because everything was coastal grandma. I said, these hemlines don't actually have to be this long. And I would want it to be a maxi. I don't know why it's given mother of the church. Uh, they had this Lurex 
that was woven throughout almost the entire spring summer collection which I think is a major fail because if you don't like that kind of like golden shimmer to your garment then you've completely alienated that consumer base. Nevertheless again we are comparing apples to apples. I said let me try on a linen suit. Try on this suit and I was quickly disappointed. It was itchy, the fabric felt heavy, it was not woven with aloe. Now, I'm, on a, I'm on something different now. Is my linen woven with aloe? Yes or no? If it's no, I'm not gonna be able to do it, okay? Uh, so it was a little rough on the skin. And what I was really shocked by y'all was the price difference. So the jacket I told you down at Loro was about 3,500. The linen jacket at Bruno was five bands. It was $5,000 and it didn't feel luxurious. The pants were about 2,000. So a little bit of a price increase, but not a whole, whole, whole lot. Um, and I didn't love the cut of them. I think Laurel really knocked the cut out of the park where the pants just kind of the, the draping and the way that they flowed was it for me. All in all, even when I look at what Bruno has on their website for spring, summer 2023, I'm just not impressed. I think they are one of the more expensive luxury brands that I hated it. I'm gonna have to say no to on the quiet luxury list. Now let's jump into the row. And uh, for those who do not know, the row was started by a duo that we all knew from a very young age. It is Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen's love child. And my first question that I have about the brand, and we're gonna just put Mary Kate and Ashley here, uh, is why y'all told them that they were fashion icons? Now I'm not gonna even make y'all guess, it's a no from me. It's a no, it's a no, it's a no from the start to the end, from the rooter to the tutor. Um, send it all back. Get rid of it. Why does it exist? Number one, I'm going to say that the pieces are so eye-wateringly overpriced until it makes my nerves bad. It is inappropriate. All right? Take a look at this skirt. Not a whole bunch to look at, so it definitely should not be priced, in my opinion, at $1,890 US dollars. Probably about two bands with your tax, okay? But you tell me why this skirt for that price point is made from viscose, a man-made material, naturally derived, but man-made material, and polyester. It makes no sense to me, especially not when I just told y'all I was down at Laurel Piana and I had on the linen pants that have been woven with aloe to maximize their comfort and the softness on the skin. What you're not going to do is sell me viscose, which they have at any number of high street and fast fashion retailers for $2,000. Now somebody is trying it. I don't know if it needs to be a strongly worded email. I don't know who we as the people need to talk to, but we've got to just loose our people from the shackles of this brand because it's, it's bad. Now let's keep going. We also have this cotton shirt. It is 100% cotton. I can't even say this with a straight face. It is 100% cotton. It is 1,000. 590 US dollars. Zara. Cost. H&M. Target on a good day. There's no reason for this to be $1,600. So if we're using kind of a standard that I'm starting to create here, I'm noticing it is a no for the row because we don't have the quality of fabric and we also have no design. I'm talking about no design, girl. It is just the plainness of the plain, the minimal of the minimal. 
And I don't have a problem with understated things. I have a problem with understated things that have a high price point, are not made from quality materials, and also have absolutely no design flair. Go back to the drawing board, throw it out, get rid of it, get somebody else to do it. Now let's go over to Jill Sonder. Uh, I know about her because of Chanel Files. Shout out to Sis Chanel. Chanel Butler, in my opinion, is one of the realists to ever do it. I don't know why her channel does not have a million, a million subscribers. So make sure you all go and follow her, subscribe to her channel. I will leave it down below. But Chanel is always putting the girls on to brands that we may not know about that are outside of kind of the common everyday discourse around fashion. And Jill Sonder is one of those brands and I just have to say that Jill is doing it for me she's doing it for me to be transparent her price points are pretty much akin to the row which I was surprised by I didn't realize that before I went to their website today but what I did see when I went there is a number of pieces that I would throw on and have a heartbeat because what they have is design they have design. You can be quiet luxury, but what you gonna be is either designed down and or you're going to have high grade, high quality materials. And I feel like Jill Sonder is able to check both boxes. So let's get started. Number one, check out this handbag. I saw this in person at the Soho Boutique and I just, tens across the board, I fell in love. I think it is so chic. I think that the design is different. We haven't seen anything like it before. It is the kind of handbag that if you know, you know. It reminds me of Le Wave. If you don't, you don't. But either way, it's going to make somebody turn their head, right? It looks like fashion. It looks like art. And then we have this black top. Y'all know I love an exaggerated sleeve. And I, and I love a top that, that'll do a little something. And you throw on a good old pair of denim shorts. Or a good trouser, good pair of slacks, as my grandma say. What could you tell me? Then you hit them with a good mule. You know, if you want a nice, more casual steez. Or you hit them with a nasty, a nasty heel. This top is exceptional for me. Now, once again, Jill's prices. Some prices be up there. But I think what's most important here is that as a quiet luxury brand, I feel like she gets it. Jill Sonder herself is no longer the head designer of the brand, but it is ingrained in the brand's DNA, I believe. These very chic and elevated designs paired with a minimal or toned down aesthetic, which I think is great for wardrobe staples. And y'all know I could not do a quiet luxury brand review without talking about Kate, one known as Kate. So it's funny because uh, I read an article in, I believe it was the New York Times, but read an article a few months ago about Kate. And I already knew about the brand, but I didn't know much about the brand's founder. But the interesting part to me was the title of the article. And the title of the article is, What Does a Cool Girl Look Like? What Does a Cool Girl Look Like? And uh, the entire point of it was cool girls look like the girls who wear Kate. Uh, and so uh, I today went to the website and I said, well, let me see what a cool girl looks like. And this was the first thing I saw. If this is what being cool looks like, I don't want no part of it. If y'all ever see me looking like this, I want you to come check on me. What is this? people got y'all in a choke what is this they said what the cool girls look like this looks like a little house on the prairie regent <laughs> costume what is just missing a bonnet i don't
And this thing is $1,000 and it's made from a fabric. I don't remember the name, but I put it on the screen. What I know is that I Googled it because I was not familiar with it. And what Google told me was that the fabric is actually cotton waste. Of course, they're telling y'all that it's more sustainable, better for the environment, wah, wah, wah. But really it's just made from trash. And the girls are paying $1,000 for it. I don't see it for Kate. <clears throat> I do not. But I want to give the brand a fair shake. So let me talk a bit more about it. From my understanding, Kate was founded by a woman who seemingly had great connections with investors. They put a ton of money into the brand. And even to her surprise, the brand took off. And the reason the brand took off and has the kind of meteoric success that it has right now is because Katie Holmes, in this viral image, was wearing a Kate wool bra as well as the cardigan. And this actually is going to go for me, I'm just gonna keep it a stack, it's gonna go for me back to the Olsen twins, okay? Why, why did you see her and think that she was a fashion icon? This woman looks like she is disheveled, like the nanny called out sick and she had to make Landon's lunch herself. And she, I just can't find the juice boxes. Where does Maria keep the snacks? Oh, I can't believe it. And we have been completely inundated with certain images and certain celebrities until we start to believe that, oh, this must be the thing. And if you like it, I love it, go off. But do not pretend like as a universal matter, this is what cool girls look like. This is what style looks like. This is what flavor and flair and what it means to be fly, alliteration, looks like. Because it is not. I don't have anything for it. Um, I think that the cardigans are grossly overpriced. My personal opinion is that they give uh, Mr. Rogers' daughter, okay? I've, I've never seen a Kate cardigan that I thought, oh, that's the one I gotta have. For me, it, it is probably a wardrobe necessity that I'm sure may feel great on the skin. I hope it does at that price point, but it's also the kind of wardrobe necessity that can be found at many places for a lower price point because once again, there is not a design element to it. Now, I was happy when I went to Kate's website to see that their price points were a little bit lower than I thought they were, and they did have a variety of items that do seem to be a bit more style forward, but I don't know why nobody's going for those pieces. See, we, we live in a monkey see, monkey do culture. Everybody just want this. And uh, for the life of me, again, I, 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 I am aghast. And so, not at the cardigan itself, y'all, but at the price point for what it is. Um, now, the other thing is that Kate is known for is this matty top which I do like, I told y'all, I'm gonna be honest, I do like this top, but I never would seriously consider it because of the price. This thing is over $1,000, and this is too little of a, of a of fabric for me to be that price. And the other thing about it too that has happened is, uh, it's over $1,000, I hope I said that. The other thing that has happened with this top, y'all, is that it has been completely replicated everywhere. You can find a dupe of this at everywhere from Pixie Market to Forever 21 to Mango. I mean, I will link them. There are so many of these options if you like this style. And so it doesn't make any sense for me to even go for the Kate one anymore. My personal opinion, once again. So once again, it's a hated it for Kate. For Kate, we're not gonna we're, we're not gonna play in that sandbox. Uh, but we will give Laurel Piana her flowers. We'll do the same thing for Jill Sonder. And a brand that I did not get to, but I think it does deserve to be mentioned on the quiet luxury list is Max Mara. So she'll get honorable mention in today's video. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. I hope that it has been informative for you. Understand that it's all in good fun, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll read a brand down, but it does not mean that I uh, am personally invested in any of these things. They are simply material items, 
and so hopefully it has not ruffled too many feathers. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all follow me all over the internet and have an amazing day. Peace.